Good morning. My name is Marlene Hertzmann. I'm situated at the CSIR, Council of Science and Industrial Research in South Africa, Pretoria. And I will be presenting Living Labs to you in order to explain the concept, but also how it can be applied, and also what we have done in South Africa with establishing a network of Living Labs and how successful we have been. The first slide, I will focus on what is the meaning of the concept. Uh, many a times people think that it's a laboratory with the tubes and bubbles, but it's actually not. It's a living lab where people collaborate to co-create. If we look at the third slide, introducing living labs, it has been in existence since 1990. Usually, everything, everybody thinks that it was established in MIT. It focused on user-driven innovation in real-life settings to co-create new services, products, and social societal infrastructure. You can also see from the picture in the, where I got the picture from that Living Lab is situated between the user involvement and the area of, you can call it innovation life cycle, but also of doing research and then getting a product into the market. <coughs> now, usually in South Africa, where we sit with a, a resource deprived or resource constrained environment and rural communities, uh, we do not always necessarily produce something to the market to make money out of it, but we rather use the co-creation to improve the lives of the ordinary citizen and to help them to have a better quality of life. If you look at the fourth slide of the key elements, you can see that the key elements focus mainly where the user is driving the model. On the right-hand side, you will see the human on the outside of the figure and he's driving the process because he's also involved. He's not the center of attraction, but he's around the attraction or around activity. It is user-driven. It is, happens in a real-life context. It's multidisciplinary. It covers different domains of things like health, education, society, geography. It impacts on community to improve itself, its products, its services. It involves different stakeholders, whether it's government, NGOs, whether it's academia or industry partners. It's supported by a specific funder or stakeholder, usually financially, but also maybe by a grant. Its unique set of values have different approaches. The fifth slide, we can see that there are key concepts of living labs. It involves the ICT and infrastructure component. There are management issues involved. It's very important to have a body that associates itself as the governing body of this living lab. The Living Lab has partners and users with different knowledge and expertise. Research is involved at different levels, either by theory or practice. And it also involves some innov technological innovation if the focus is on technology. There's also an approach involved where different methods and techniques can be applied and used to gain best practice within the environment of the Living Lab. Slide six is focusing on the process. You can see it's a very involved process. It has different levels of maturity. There's design, there's testing on the left-hand side. In the middle, you can see examples of European living labs that were used to, to, to develop this slide by um, Mr. Ballin in 2006 to show you where or more or less it fits in between the pilot and in-house R&D. Slide seven, <coughs> sorry, focus on the types of living labs. We have rural, urban, peri-urban, or suburban living labs. In our environment in South Africa, we normally focus only on rural living labs, but there are also success examples of urban living labs, especially in Cape Town with our labs. If you want to Google it, you will find some amazing information on that living lab. There are also types of innovation from technology, business, learning, social, aesthetic. All of them are involved, and it depends on what the focus or the purpose of the living lab is on which type of innovation you will focus on. Slide 9 focus on uh, living labs enabling collaborative open innovation framework where you can see where you co-create on the left hand side with your entrepreneurs and stakeholders and it goes through the funnel of innovation from pre-incubation to commercialization. This slide was also developed by um, in the 2012, and there's a whole report on this available from their web page where you can go to isdafrica.org. Then the slide number 10 is 
we have gave, given you some examples of which type of stakeholder groups can be involved. It depends on the country, obviously. Slide 10, we have defined learning labs from an African context because we don't want to use the definitions from Europe. But from an African perspective, you can see it, is, it can be an, an environment, it can be a methodology or an approach with, which you apply to get co-creation between different stakeholders and successful deployments can result in, in improved processes or service delivery or business models or products. And the last point, leveraging living lab methodologies and living lab networks in Africa provide an important opportunity to collaborate, co-create and prototype and test new products, processes and services. Slide 12, you can see the advancement that we have made from South Africa to develop also living labs in East Africa. We have nine operational living labs. And based on that, we have been, in 2009, established the state in slide number 13, the Living Labs in Southern Africa network, known as LISA. We are a local, we, we are an established body, but nobody needs to pay any fees to belong to us, because our, we see our main mandate to support other Living Labs, share networks, share databases, and to then co-create also to improve. We've also seen that a lot of the successful living labs in this network in South Africa have advanced themselves into Africa. Our labs, as I've mentioned before, have all over Africa different other living labs that they support, whether it's by advice or financially or through the specific stakeholders. What makes LISA a success slide number 14 is that we have a board that are represented by the managers of the living lab, but also by NGOs and people from rural communities. We are a small entity, and we believe that makes us, uh, gives us more strength. We have a regular face-to-face -face interactions and workshops. We invite living labs and people from their communities to share lessons learned, best practices. We focus on product testing. We also involve the living labs from different angles, we share networks, and I've already mentioned the databases, we write collaborative papers, we market living labs to each other, and the uniqueness of each living lab focus adds to the contribution, not only on ICT. We have nine operational, fully functional, meaning they are financially independent, they have their own legal entities, and we have also helped with the establishment of living labs in East Africa, Mauritius, and Namibia and then also recently the one in El Salvador. In conclusion, I can say that the Living Lab is an extremely successful methodology, approach or environment that allows for innovation, new services and products, and for user involvement in order to co-create. It is the future methodology to apply in complex projects to ensure progress, sustainability, and improved products. Uh, thank you, I don't want to add any more if you need any more advice, you are welcome to contact me in slide 16 is my email address and I will be available for questions and answers hereafter. Thank you.